This is Photo Walkthrough episode number 118, Tutorial 18, Chapter 1. Hello and welcome to Photo Walkthrough Tutorial 18. This is the first chapter in a brand new tutorial covering something that I wanted to find a tutorial about myself some time back and I did a whole bunch of searching around on the internet, found it really difficult to find any good tutorials on the subject. What I'm covering today is how to dragonize a photograph. Now if you haven't had the chance to see Andre Dragon's work, it is well worth going and taking a look, but if you have, Chances are you've wondered how he produces those photographs himself. Well, the great man isn't speaking. He does this for a living. He will dragonize photographs for money. Uh, but of course, a lot of people have speculated on how he might go about it. Today, you're going to find out about my speculation on how he goes about it. Um, I've picked out a few of the things that I think are characteristic of his style, and I'm going to show you how to do those things in Photoshop CS4. Now, um, remember, the uh, Photo Walkthrough show is available at photowalkthrough.com, and we've just updated the website completely, completely the organization. We've got some brand new pages on there. You can slice and dice through all the tutorial chapters in a variety of different ways. It's a brand new website with loads and loads of new interesting stuff. Please check it out. And also, while you're there, take the chance to check out our show sponsors who make the entire thing possible. So a massive thank you, as always, to GoDaddy.com. Check out the photowalkthrough.com slash GoDaddy page to find all of the latest codes. We've got codes that are changing at the moment and uh, they will continue to change in the future so we, sometimes we're going to have some 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 short-term deals that are really good deals it's always worth checking out photoworkthrough.com slash godaddy uh, i'd also like to say a massive thank you to our other regular show sponsor angie's list who you can find a bit more about on our website at photoworkthrough.com slash angie's list but if you're looking for a local person to work on your house or your car or a local healthcare professional by looking at reviews of people who've actually used them in your area head on over to angieslist.com and you can get a 20 percent discount by using the promo code photo on their website so as always a massive thank you to our sponsors i've got another sponsor coming up after the tutorial but for now let's get started on chapter one of tutorial 18 dragonizing a portrait Hello and welcome to the latest photo walkthrough tutorial. Today I am really excited to be showing you something that I think there's been a lack of on the internet um, and that is good tutorials on how to produce an Andre Dragon style portrait. Now if you've not come across Andre Dragon um, it's definitely worth a look at, uh, at his website to get an idea of the kind of style of portraiture that he's famous for. He's got a very, very distinct style. It's uh, a very high contrast, very high detail, slightly surreal style that is very, very attractive and very interesting. Um, real storytelling photographs and uh, very much something that people have wanted to emulate for a long time. And uh, there's not really very much out there on the internet that tells you how to do it. So um, I've been working on my own little approach to dragonizing a photograph using Photoshop. Um, I think most of these techniques are available in uh, Elements and various other uh, photography uh, um, editing packages out there as well so I'm sure you'll be able to reproduce the same sort of steps that I've done in whatever package you use um, but uh, what we're aiming for is a high contrast high detail sort of sharpened looking uh, maybe with an interesting color to it so uh, uh, we're going to go for a sort of a sepia style uh, hint as well um, and I've chosen uh, this photograph here. This is a photograph I took of myself when I got uh, a set of uh, studio lights um, and I was playing around with them. Uh, now, unfortunately, at the time, I was as sick as a dog. Um, so I, I, I don't know whether or not I actually look all that well in this picture, but, but it's, it's a reasonable photograph to start working with to try and dragonize. Um, but the first thing that you'll notice if you look at it um, is the color is a little bit off. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is just a very straightforward white balance. Now I'm working on a JPEG here. Um, this is not a, a raw file. I could, of course, white balance this in the raw converter if I was using a, a raw file. Uh, I decided to work from a JPEG today just because uh, it keeps things a little simpler. And I wanted to concentrate really on the dragonizing steps, not so much on the... Uh, um, you know, the basic nuts and bolts of post-processing. I wanted to really focus on, on the dragon technique. So I'm going to keep the, uh, the white balance technique really simple today. I'm just going to go in the layers palette here to the, um, to the new adjustment layer icon. And I'm going to choose a curves layer. 
and I'm going to just use the auto button here and what that's going to do is it's going to analyze the image and figure out uh, what it thinks is uh, you know the brightest part the darkest part and what the overall tonality of the image is for color and it's going to try and correct it so if I click auto you'll see that, that this is the change it's made for us let's turn this layer on and off so you can see now at first glance that might appear to be a little greeny um, it's actually not, it's just your uh, colour perception um, uh, which has got used to the, the previous image. Um, if you just sit and, and work with this image for a little while it will start to look fine. So I, I know from having practised this that, that the, the white balance there is actually not a bad, not a bad first stab at a white balance. Now while I'm here I'm also going to just put a couple of points on the curve so we're in the RGB remember here in the curves dialog you can choose the red channel the green channel or the blue channel that's assuming you're in uh, RGB mode remember under image mode we've got RGB color we've got all these other color modes we could use we've got lab color CMYK and index and things like that um, so if you had CMYK mode chosen you would have a cyan magenta yellow black in here uh, but we're in RGB mode, so we've got RGB. I could be uh, enhancing uh, individual color channels if I wish, but if I choose RGB, it's working on all of the channels, which in this case is what I want. So I'm going to drag that top point up a little and the bottom point down a little. Oh, please, please ignore my uh, Dropbox. I have Dropbox running in the background there. Um, and this is just uh, going to give us a little contrast enhancement. So if I turn that on and off, not only is it changing our colour balance, and that might have started to look more natural colour-wise to you by now, um, we've just dragged the bright parts of the, co of the curve up, brightening the bright areas, and we've dragged the dark parts of the curve down, darkening the dark areas, which of course increases the overall contrast. So that's our first step, is just to white balance and slightly increase the contrast, because this is a, a high contrast technique, so we may as well get started with that. Um, now, the next step is going to be um, towards evening out some of the light levels. One of the things that I think characterizes Dragon style is that um, we've got good detail throughout the picture. Um, particularly, you know, we've got shadow areas, we've got good detail in the shadow areas, we've got detail in the highlight areas, and everything's got a sort of a slightly hyper-real, even lightness to it, um, even though there is a, a general um, overall, uh, you know, high tonality. I'm just going to kill that drop box so that we don't keep getting those messages. Um, so let's, let's take that, uh, uh, get that started now. We're going to create a new bitmap layer, which is this icon down here. Um, and we're going to start off by making it a hard light layer. Now this is just to get us started. I'm going to do very, very light edits on here. Um, and uh, I'm going to start off immediately by dragging the opacity of that hard light layer down to 50%. And um, what we're going to do, I'm working with, today I've got a, uh, a Wacom Bamboo Pen and Touch, which is this beastie here. It is um, not only a graphics tablet, but you can actually use your fingers on this to... Um, to use it just like if you've got a um, a Mac um, you might be familiar with the touchpads the trackpads on the Mac laptops um, you can do multiple finger gestures you can do the same thing here on this Wacom Bamboo so if you want to zoom in you can you can uh, um, do that with a two finger drag there um, and uh, you can scroll around and all sorts of things with multiple fingers I'll, I'll review the um, uh, the whack and bamboo pen and touch in a separate show but that's what I'm using but I'm also going to be using it with a pen uh, because it does also work like a graphics tablet so um, what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to grab a brush I'm going to press the B key which is the brush tool here and I'm going to press D to give us black and white um, and remember the X key switches back and forth between black and white here um, and I'm going to just with a bit of black um, and I'm going to get the flow down because I, this is going to be a really gentle edit now there's a quick and easy way of, of changing the flow just like with your adjustment brush in Lightroom you can press keys on the keyboard there so if you press 2 it would go to 20% the same is working here in Photoshop so you can change the flow just by pressing a number key so if I want 50% press 5 if I want 10% press 1 if I want 15% you press them quickly 1 5 and you can dial in 15% um, so 
A nice and easy way of changing the flow. Now I'm using a, a pressure sensitive brush, a uh, pressure sensitive tablet as well here. So I've got all manner of control over, over the, 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 the darkness of this edit. Um, but this is going to be a really light edit. I'm pressing very lightly. You might not even see this edit. I'll turn it on and off in a moment. Um, and you'll see that it has actually done something. But what I'm doing is picking out the very brightest areas. And the reason I'm doing this with a hard light layer is the soft light, which I'm going to do in a moment for, for a proper dodge and burn, needs a little bit of greyness to work on. If it's full bright, it doesn't really have as much effect as we'd like. So I'm just starting off with a hard light, just to give us a little bit of um, moving it starting moving it in the right direction just to give the soft light layer I'm going to do for dodging and burning something to work with um, so there that, that's that's not a bad start let's just turn that on and off and you can see it has actually just taken down those those very brightest areas just down a little now it does it does go a little gray so um, it's it's important to to not be too heavy on this edit and I might even just back that opacity off a little more just to just by eye I think I, I really just want to take just the edge off the lightness. That's more like what I was looking for. So we've ended up at 36% there. Now, as I said, the next level, the next layer is going to be a soft light layer. So I'm going to do another bitmap layer. Create a new layer, and we're going to choose a blending mode of soft light, um, which is very similar to the hard light layer, except that it's a much, much more gentle thing. Um, it's going to, uh, anywhere where I paint white, um, is going to brighten and anywhere I put black is going to darken um, and we're going to essentially dodge and burn here so once again with my brush um, and once again with black selected I'm going to put my flow all the way back up to 100% to do that by pressing 0 on the keyboard um, and I'm going to just with my brush I'm going to start darkening down those brightest areas and what I'm trying to do is I'm heading in that sort of slightly hyper real removing the uh, the uh, the very highlights and low lights uh, and making everything a little bit flatter in terms of uh, the lighting um, which uh, we we're, we're not going to be able to do this right to begin with we're going to we're going to just try and get approximately where we want and once we've done the final dragonizing steps we can come back in and really make this image sing in the way we want it to so i've just pressed x to get white as my color um and I'm going to just paint some detail back in on the hair there. As you can see, it's very grey. That's, I'm afraid, one of my little curses. Um, so I'm just painting a little bit of white in on those shadowed areas. I want them to stay as shadow areas, but I also want them to, to have detail in them. Because um, we are going to need... Um, light and dark areas for this for this technique to look right but but I also want to make sure we've got detail in those areas so you know areas around here on the ear for example we could bring back a detail detail there and once again the li lighter areas let's just take those back down I'm trying to get the lightness between these two cheeks to be about even now let's just quickly remember where we started because this is where we started after the color balance this this cheek is definitely darker than this cheek and this part of the forehead here is definitely darker uh, sorry lighter than, than this part here um, I'm just trying to move them together I'm just trying to layer it in a little at a time so that hopefully I don't hit anything too hard and make it look too strange and just darken down the lighter one and lighten up the darker one and just move them together and all those all those really deep shadow areas like the corners of the eyes and under the nose just make sure there's detail there I'm not trying to make them as as bright as the rest I'm just trying to make sure there's something for the for the later sharpening we're going to do to work on so that we can see detail in those areas Thank you very much for watching the tutorial today. As always, this is the first chapter in a brand new tutorial. We've got two more chapters to come in the coming weeks. Shouldn't be very long. They're all in the can and ready to roll. I'm trying to come back really strong with photo walkthrough here and produce as much content as I possibly can because I know that's what you guys are after. Now, if you're interested in getting hold of a full HD version of this tutorial with all of the screencast all in one piece, no ads, full 720p HD, a pristine copy for you to keep forever as a download, 
You'll be able to buy that on the Photo Walkthrough website very soon, possibly already, depending on when you're watching this. So head on over to photowalkthrough.com and find Tutorial 18 and look for the download and buy links on there. And you should be able to, when I've got the, the, the new feature up and running, buy a full HD copy of this tutorial for just $3. You can donate more if you'd like. It's a way of helping to support the show. But if you just want something to download and keep forever, that $3 will get you the full HD version of this tutorial. Also, I'd like to say a massive thank you to our regular show sponsor, a new regular show sponsor, Zazzle.co.uk. They will print almost anything on almost anything. You can print on t-shirts, mugs, mouse mats, bags, aprons, posters, postcards, business cards, badges, buttons, all sorts of different things. And I've bought a load of stuff off these guys. Uh, really, really good quality stuff. It comes very quickly. And best of all, if you've ever wanted to make some money from your photography, you can make your own products, set up your own store, and charge your own prices. And of course, Zazzle will send you the money that you make from selling those goods, minus their fee for actually making the goods. So Zazzle is a really, really great website to get into if you've ever wanted to make a little bit of money selling those photographs that you've been working so hard on. So head on over to zazzle.co.uk and if you uh, spend over $50 there, you can use the promo code PHOTOWALK123 to get a 10% discount. Or if you spend over $75 there, you can get 12% discount by using the promo code PHOTOWALK321. Thank you, as always, to Zazzle for supporting the show. Okay, that's us done for today, and I will catch you in Tutorial 18, Chapter 2, which should be coming up with luck next week. photocastnetwork.com your photography resource in the potosphere photocastnetwork.com <laughs>